Let's take a look at positioning this text in different places on this image. In the HTML code, I have a division with a class of hero, which functions as the parent. The first child of that is an image. The second child is a Spantec. Let's jump to our CSS. Here I have a dot hero, which will talk to the parent class. I also have a hero space image, which will talk to the image inside the hero class. And then a hero span, which talks to the second child in the hero class. Notice over here that as they scale the page, the image is being cropped off. It is not scaling. To solve that problem, we're going to go to the image. And first of all, set the width to 100%. And if we stop there, we now get a distorted image. This is horrible. Don't ever do this. You must also add height of auto. This is now a scaling image. The second problem is how to get the text on top of the image. Well, that's a two-step process. Into the parent, which is the hero, we set the position of relative. Once that's in place, we can come down to the child, which is the span tag, and set its position to absolute. That squishes it over here. You can barely see it on the right side of the screen. We're now going to choose one of the corners. So I could do top of zero, and I could set the left edge at zero. And now you can see the text has moved to the top and left. Another thing I could do instead of the top is the bottom. And that looks good, but there's a problem here. To help us visualize this problem, we're going to add a border. And it's going to be red. It'll be dashed and one pixel. With that border in place, you can see that it hangs over the bottom of the image a little bit. That's because by default, images are inline tags. So to switch it, we'll simply come up to the image and tell the image to display itself as a block and that problem is solved. So we can now get rid of this. Instead, I'm going to add a background color, RGBA, which allows me to use transparency and I'll do white, 255, 255, 255. That's your red, green, and blue values. The fourth value is the transparency. So five would be 50% transparent. So now I've got a white background behind my text. It makes it a little easier to see. It improves legibility. With that in place, I'm also going to add some padding. And I'll just throw in one rim around the entire thing. That makes it kind of pop on the screen. Well, what if I wanted it full width? I've got the left side set at zero. What if I set the right side also at zero? What would that do for me? Sure enough, that white box now goes from the left to the right. And with that, I could add, if I wanted, text align center. And that would move the text now to the center. Well, what if I wanted it in the middle instead of the top or bottom? Well, I could set the bottom at 40%, and that would kick it up on the screen. Now, the neat thing about this is that it's still responsive. Now, in this view, that text is a little bit small. So I could actually switch to my larger CSS file and talk to the hero span tag I could bump the font size up to say 2REM instead of the default. So now it's small and there it gets big. So I can control that. Another thing you could do, instead of setting the left at zero, you could actually bring it in say 20 pixels. So it's into there. And instead of setting the right at zero, you could actually set the width and I could make it 30% of the entire image. Now, why am I using percentages? It's so that as I scale the page, 
it scales with me. Okay, let me show you what not to do. Let's try setting the width to 400 pixels. It looks good here and here. But when I get down to a phone screen size, you can see that it's whacked off on the right side. So it's very important that you test your designs at all screen widths from 320 all the way up to the widest size. By using a little bit more CSS and a lot of creativity, you could get an overlay that looked like this or an overlay that looked like this.